doing very well. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really excited to be chatting with you. So currently I live in Vancouver, BC. Uh, I was born and raised in a small town in Ontario called Newford, Ontario. Uh, it's just outside of Collingwood um, in north of Toronto. But I've been out west for about 20 years. <laughs> so it's been a long time. I actually didn't start playing guitar and singing until I was 20 years old, um, which is very late in terms of uh, most musicians that are professional musicians. Um, I'm a late bloomer, which is totally fine. So I started at 20 and uh, I just really fell in love with it and worked at it really hard and here I am. So that's it. <laughs> Um, especially as a Canadian uh, 90s kid, I would say Alanis Rosette was a huge inspiration for me. Um, also, Gwen Stefani in the album Tragic Kingdom, like that whole album from No Doubt was a huge, huge inspiration for me. Um, also, Nirvana was huge and Hole was huge. I know there's a feud. Um, also, Queens of the Stone Age and Foo Fighters. And my biggest, like, now, I guess, would be Beth Hart. If you don't know her, check her out. She's the shit. I do. I play guitar uh, and I sing. I shittily play... Uh, piano. <laughs> I wouldn't actually say that I play it. And I'm learning violin. Uh, my great-grandfather built a violin for me and so I am basically learning it because it's cool as hell uh, and there's a lot of history to it but also because I feel obligated to because he was such a badass violinist. So, there you go. <laughs> this is for you, Papa. Love you. I did not. I actually trained myself, which is probably why most vocal uh, coaches at this point have told me that I am singing wrong. Um, I, my latest vocal coach is uh, amazing and is not telling you that exact thing um basically she's just saying to take care of it and to make sure that i am taking care of my voice in between singing um, so that i don't ruin it but most vocal coaches will tell me that i'm not doing it right so yeah is that a good answer i don't know <laughs> Um, I was actually, uh, my first couple like band experiences were with bands that I did not start. Um, the first one was called, it was in Guelph, Ontario. I can't remember the year. It was a really long time ago. It was called Drop Sailing Coast. We played like one show. Uh, that was my first ever, ever experience being a musician um, and then after that what was it uh, Vancouver I guess a band called Fast Ham and that was like one of the most fun times of my life it, it, it was a punk band um, and my good friend Conrad and I lived together and we just basically wrote a bunch of songs and had a really great time and I got to just like jump around on stage, wear a tutu. I played a kazobo, which is the loudest, um, what is it, the loudest harmonica? No, loudest kazoo. <laughs> K 
Kazobo, loudest kazoo, and it's shaped like a trumpet. And uh, I had a really good time with that. So that was really fun. Love your fast hand. Um, so this is kind of a tricky question because my first album was actually in 2014 as a solo artist and however it was it's so different that album is so different from what I'm doing now that I don't actually like compare it to what I do now. Uh, it's a folk album and it's super chill, beautiful harmonies, all the things, which is awesome. And I just I guess I just don't really uh, compare it. I basically feel like I'm a new artist after that. So my first EP that I'm technically counting <laughs> um, was the one that I released in 2020. I am independent and uh, I do everything pretty much myself. So if anyone wants to help me with it, hit me up. Um, basically, I see myself in rock and roll, grunge, and blues. It's such a hard thing to place myself in. Um, I don't really see myself in one specific genre. Uh, like there's, you know, there's certain songs where I'm really kind of teetering almost on like hard rock and metal, but then there's, you know, songs like Wide Awake that are super chill and uh, rock and roll ballads, so it's really hard to say. I don't know. I like mixing it up. Uh, I write everything myself. Um, the band that is with me right now, my band right now, is badass and like composes a lot of their stuff. Um, pretty much everything of theirs. So I basically will come to them with a song and be like, this is what I want. And they're just like killer and add things. Sometimes I'll be like, I'm kind of going for more of this vibe. This is kind of the vibe that I want. And they'll adjust accordingly. And, uh, but they're a dream team and I can't imagine doing it without them. I really couldn't do it without them. So thank you so much to my boys I love you Only place. um lyric wise I don't know I guess uh, personal experience a lot most of the time pretty much all of my songs are personal experience um yeah I would say that's yeah it's all personal experience I don't know what to say. I'm really terrible at writing about other people, which is really, it sounds very selfish, uh, but I'm just not good at it. I'm a very emotional writer. Um, so I have a really hard time writing about things that I don't actually feel in the moment. Um, and because of that, it's really hard for me to write about other things. Um, so yeah, I write about things I feel. <laughs> Um, okay, so the collaborations with these artists, um, writing-wise, it, it wasn't a collaboration. I wrote all the songs, um, basically. So my dear friend Karina Keeling um, came in and did a lot of, most of, like, I think all of the high vocals and all the, like, harmonies and everything for that album. Um, she's an absolutely phenomenal songwriter, singer-songwriter on her own right. Um, and so she came in. We were a band for quite a while. We were called Box Set, which we thought was absolutely hilarious. Still is very funny. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so I invited her to come and do vocals on that album with me. Um, is Will Ross on that album? I think my friend Will Ross is on that album. Uh, I was in my good friend Will Ross's band for three years. Uh, and I learned a lot about being in a band and how to be a band leader from being a member of that band, watching Will do what he did, um, which is really, really special. He's basically my brother. Karina is my sister. And, uh, and my friend Martin, uh, who plays cello in that album, he I think he did two songs on that one. Man, it was so long ago. I feel like I'm blanking. Um, he did This Old Box, and I think he did Occupy. Um, and both songs he brought just, like, such... He knew exactly what I wanted when I was describing, like, the visual that I had of what the song meant to me. He was able to take my visual and how I felt about the song and turn it into what he did. Uh, he's very good at that. So... Yeah. Thank you, Mark. You're the shit. Uh, uh, I guess this is a really hard question because the song that means most to me personally changes a lot depending on the evening, I guess, and like what's happening in my life. Um, and especially right now because uh, I do have a six-piece band and and how everyone is playing each night changes and the energy every night changes and the crowd changes every night. Um, but one that pretty much always means a lot to me, I'd say, is uh, My Stupid Heart. It's not on the album, um, but you can find it on YouTube. It's There's a live version of it. Uh, I think it's like Emily Miller Live with Rick Shaw or something. Um, that one always means a lot to me. Um, what do I like to perform live the most? I'd say, man, Catastrophes is like one of the most fun songs to play live ever. Um, right now though, like, so that one's from my EP. Um, Right now, my song, Burn That Wish, is the most fun to play live. It's like heavy as hell, and uh, and I can't wait to continue to write in that kind of direction. It's gonna be really fun. <laughs> this is a really hard one because in the last, um, in the last like two years, I guess, since COVID happened, I've been collaborating a lot with people that I would not normally have collaborated with. Um, and I think that's a really huge thing for me. It's pushed me beyond my boundaries of uh, comfort in terms of songwriting. Um, and it's also expanded my horizons in terms of who I work with and who, who I play with. Um, one of my all-time favorite bands, uh, Ninja Spy, um, my right-hand man in my band right now is is Joel Parent, who's the lead singer of Ninja Spy. Um, so that, that in itself is an amazing thing. Um, yeah, uh, I got to work with a really, really good friend of mine, uh, Steve Raskin, uh, Four Knox Five. He's a phenomenal producer and DJ, and uh, I'm the first female vocalist on any Four Knox Five collaboration recordings. So I'm already honored in that way. Um, but it was also a really awesome chance to work outside of my genre that I, I usually come in. So yeah, I'd say that's kind of it. I, the highlight of my career is always changing and uh, 
and every time I get to collaborate with people, anytime I get to play another show with like people I don't usually play with, or I don't know, it's just I love it all. I love it all. Love it all. <laughs> Not like you. Okay, so my day job, hilariously, I have a couple things that I do. Uh, right now, I am the production coordinator for an animation studio, and I work on Barbie. I work on the Barbie animation uh, like series, I guess. There's a whole bunch that are going on at all times, uh, Netflix, if you look up Barbie on Netflix under the kids section, or if you just look up Barbie at all, you'll see a whole bunch of Barbie. <laughs> so this is my first time being in animation at all. I've always kind of worked in production in some way. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked to be here. And yeah, that's my full-time job. Um, I'm also a massage therapist and I work at the Rickshaw Theater in my spare time. I'm sorry, I do. I do. Oh, shit. I shouldn't work this much. Anyways, that's what I do. My stupid heart just don't pay attention. COVID. Um, well, I mean, like I said, um, the pandemic actually was a huge opportunity for me to collaborate with people that I wouldn't normally collaborate with. Um, I have actually, we're almost finished. We're not finished. We're never finished. I've done, a, a project with a really long time close friend of mine. He's the one who actually got me into music in the first place when I was 19 years old. And uh, I've worked up to him ever since. And so we did one collaboration song and it's turned into an album um, and it's secret. So I can't really tell you anything more about it, but it's going to happen soon. So keep an eye out. <laughs> Uh, yes, Canada was actually pretty good in terms of uh, support for artists. And we were also lucky enough to have um, the CERB, which was awesome. Uh, you know, artists and any gig workers were able to apply for it. Um, and then there was also help from uh, a number of different Canadian associations, uh, should I shout out right now? Oh my goodness, what are they called? Unison Fund has been awesome. Uh, the AFC has been awesome. And that's it, I think. And then the CERB, yeah, it was great. So, I mean, even if it was late, it was great really really helpful and I don't think we would have survived without it. I can't imagine living in the States through that time. Like as an artist. I don't, I don't know what I would have done. I would have been in real trouble. So appreciative hundred percent of where I live. Thank you, Canada. Dear God. Um, it did. It did in the way, like I said earlier, that, that it kind of pushed me outside of my boundaries and my genre. Um, and that project that I also kind of briefly mentioned earlier uh, is honestly, I think, the best writing I've done. And the only reason, really, that I was able to write like that, I think, is because I was, like, the entire world was shut off, and everything else was shut off, and I was in isolation, 
you know, uh, I don't know if I would have written the same. The world was what it is now. Um, I feel like I'm really, really busy right now. Uh, and so my creativity is like pretty limited, I guess you could say. Um, and because of that, I feel like I would not have written the same way that I have written in the last while. Positives all the time. <laughs> Hundred percent, I've had terrible experiences, um, and you know what? I first of all get underestimated all the time, but I am lucky enough to be surrounded by a ton of really amazing uh, men in the industry that really support me um, and and help give me more of the voice. If does that make sense? It's not like I need men to uh, hold me up in that way, but the men that I surround myself with are constantly helping me have a voice, um, which is really, really beautiful. And I really uh, hold all of those relationships really dear to my heart. Um, yes, I've had a lot of hard times in the music industry as a woman uh, basically like every terrible thing that you could ever think of being said to a woman has been said to me uh, in a way in a way I feel like it's giving me a thicker skin which I appreciate and in another way uh, it's kind of difficult because I am really critical of myself, my appearance, and how I feel about my body, and how I feel, you know, just self-conscious. And as a woman, generally in the world at the moment, um, I'm self-conscious. Uh, and the music industry is very judgmental, still, about how you look and, and all that stuff. So. Kind of a hard place to be. I don't know, but there's awesome musicians that are changing the narrative for everyone. Uh, like Lizzo, um, just kicking ass, not giving a shit. I love it. So yeah. Anyways, people like that give me a little more. Hobbies. <laughs> um, actually, the summer is this year has been so busy. I haven't really done any of my hobbies, particularly. Um, but in the winter, I love to ski, and I spend a lot of time doing that. In my so yeah, skiing. Uh, summertime usually it is my biking. Yeah. Desert Island album. This is really hard. <laughs> um, oh God. This is like making like all of my favorite albums just run through like a Rolodex in my head just trying to figure out what the fuck, what the fuck I'm going to put. Like, okay, so should I do top 10? Like, Dummy, Portis Head, uh, Tragic Kingdom, No Doubt. You know what? I'm not even ashamed. Coldplay Parachutes, beautiful album. 
uh, what is this? Stone Age. I'm just gonna add that in there, whatever. <laughs> Queens of the Stone Age, just general. Uh, broken social scene, you forgot it in people. God, now I gave myself 10, this is so stupid. Um, now I can't even think of them. Anyways, I gave you a bunch. Cool. Hope you like it. <laughs> yes. Uh, I will be recording this fall. Hope you like it. <laughs> I can't tell you any more than that. But yes, I'll be recording. So. Your ears peeled, eyes peeled. Uh, yes, we actually just did a couple tours in a row. Uh, so, yeah, we did uh, a festival in Sycamus, which was awesome. Played with a bunch of awesome bands. Uh, Canadian Legends 5440 were there. It's awesome. Daniel Wesley was there. Jesse Roper. Uh, Minette Echo. Spendo. Uh, Dr. Friday. I'm gonna forget someone. I feel really bad. <laughs> I think that's it though. Uh, yeah, it was a great time. And then uh, last weekend we just did a uh, uh, four day weekend tour. We went to, uh, there were 20 of us on tour. There were four bands, 20 of us. It was insane. Uh, so we went to Comox, we went to Filbert Festival for a couple days, and then we went to Powell River to Powtown Shakedown. It was a great time. Yeah, so if so, my album Brave is not on Spotify, uh, mainly because I was actually this is actually what happened. I was writing a grant, um, and because the genres are so different, uh, I wanted to make sure that I was counted as a new artist in terms of like because I was a new artist in, in the genre of like rock and roll brunch. Um, so I took the other album off of Spotify, but you can still find that on Bandcamp if you like. Uh, you can go to www.emilyloy slash bandcamp.com. Anyways, look up Bandcamp, look up my name. You'll find it. <laughs> it's there. I don't have any merch yet. I'm working on it. And uh, yeah, more songs are coming soon too. So yeah, thank you. Germany, and when the fuck are you coming over? I've never been to Germany. I would absolutely love to come to Germany. Uh, and I am planning a tour, hopefully for the new year, I'm looking to get funding right now, uh, from the, there's a couple grants that I am applying for, for international touring. So I am hoping, fingers crossed, that I can get over to Germany, um, and if anyone is able to help, please send me a message. I would love to chat with you, um, whether you can help me book into uh, venues in Germany or 
if anyone is interested in helping fund uh, our tour, basically. Yeah, there's six of us. It would be dope. And we'll have a great time. Cool. Thank you so much for having me. I love you lots. You're the best. And uh, I'm on the way out. Have a good one. Okay, just sorry, just making sure I didn't miss anything.